Yvonne Furneaux was one of the most beautiful actresses of the 1950s. Men lusted after her, and women wanted to be just like her. However, as is the case with many beautiful women, there are many secrets hidden in her past that make her life an astonishing one. In this video, we're going to go through all the secrets of Yvonne's life. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed. We're going to do our best to personally reply to your comment. Wealthy Beginning Yvonne was born May 11, 1928 in northern France. Her mother was French, her father English. She was born into a rich, upper-class family and spent most of her childhood in northern France. Her mother was a well-to-do housewife and her father was one of the directors of Lloyd's Bank. The family lived a very happy life in France, however, things were about to change with the onset of World War II. For some unknown reason, Yvonne inherited her mother's surname. It's possible that the reason had something to do with her father's business. When Yvonne was 10 years old, her family moved back to England. A smart young woman. Even though the situation in Europe was dire, Yvonne received a very wealthy education both in France and in England. Because of this, when it was time to apply to university, she was successfully accepted to Oxford University with a full scholarship. Yvonne decided to study modern languages at university, including French and Italian, both of which she spoke fluently, although it seemed like languages would not be able to bring her success. In fact, languages opened many doors for her in the world of cinema. A passion for acting developed in college. Although not much is known about where Yvonne's passion for acting came from, many believe that it came about in her college days at Oxford. She was probably inspired by many other actors of her time and decided to pursue the same career. She once mentioned in an interview that the moment she graduated from college, she had decided to become a movie star. Her parents were taken aback by this decision, but because acting was considered high class at the time, they didn't have a problem with it. She was so good that she eventually landed a place at London's Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts and studied alongside Diane Chalinto and Joan Collins, modeling and several prominent roles. Alongside her acting aspirations, Yvonne had also attempted a career in modeling. Because she was absolutely stunning, this was not a problem for her. Yvonne made her first stage theater debut at the age of 24 and decided to use her mother's maiden name instead of her father's because it sounded more artistic. Some of her earliest roles included The Taming of the Shrew and Macbeth. Yvonne was a fantastic actress and critics absolutely loved her. In fact, her appearance was so mesmerizing that in 1953, she landed on the cover of Vogue. The now famous photo was taken by Norman Parkinson of Yvonne in a theater chair modeling, and several prominent roles. Slowly, Yvonne had decided to move from the theater to the big screen. This was not going to be an easy decision to make because many producers were promising the world to her, but few would be able to deliver. In fact, the first movie that Yvonne appeared in was a flop. A few years later, Yvonne was given another opportunity to try her luck on the big screen with the film Affair in Monte Carlo. This film was much better received by critics, and Yvonne's movie career was now off to a much better start. She played Jenny in The Beggar's Opera, which is known as one of the most expensive British films ever made. Unfortunately, this film received scathing reviews and was deemed one of the worst British movies of the 50s. A few more attempts before giving up. For two decades, Yvonne continued to attempt to make herself a star actress. Unfortunately, everyone was focusing on the way she looked and not on the acting skills that she was able to bring to a role. Therefore, there was no longer much point in continuing with her ambitions. She decided to officially quit acting in 1982. Looking back at her career, many of Yvonne's films were very unsuccessful. Even though she was open to appearing in all sorts of genres, she was simply never able to meet a group of people who would produce a movie that actually suited her acting skills. Meeting the love of her life Although her acting career was not going well, Yvonne was blessed in the area of her love life. She met a former fighter pilot from the war who later became a camera operator and they fell madly in love with each other. Yvonne literally dedicated the rest of her life to her husband. Even though many men approached her, wanted to be with her, she was always loyal to her husband until he passed away in 2007. Life in the Castle After her husband's death, Yvonne was devastated. She didn't want to be surrounded by the same people all the time. She also didn't know how to continue her life without her husband. So, 
she made a wild decision. She used the money that she had made and also the money that she had inherited from her family to buy a castle. It's a medieval castle located 45 kilometers north of Rome, Italy. She spent years restoring the castle and bringing it back to its former glory while also enabling it to live in. To this day, she spends almost all of her time in the castle and doesn't have much contact with the outside world. Many people believe that this was her way of mourning her husband's death. Yvonne is still alive and currently 93 years old. Her films are sometimes still played on TV as old classics, but none of her movies are given the credit they deserve. Yvonne poured her entire life into acting and attempting to succeed at a career, but it seems that although the years that she spent acting were fun, it was all for nothing one way or another. Although very little is known about the way she lives her life right now, Yvonne's likely spending some of her time and money with charities in Italy. Yvonne's always loved children and the dramatic arts, so it's likely she's devoting much of her life to help these causes. The country that remembers Yvonne best is Italy, possibly because she still lives there. When it comes to Britain and France, her movies have mostly been forgotten and replaced by more modern remakes of the same stories. It is truly a shame that Yvonne was only seen as a beautiful woman for the longest time because she was incredibly smart and had so much more to give to the acting world. Unfortunately, this is the reality that many actors have to deal with, especially when they keep hitting a difficult spot where they're not receiving any good acting auditions. Hopefully, Yvonne's story will be able to teach young generations some lessons in pursuing their dreams and knowing who to trust in the acting industry. Even though Yvonne was not able to achieve her dreams, perhaps her story can inspire others to pursue their dreams in a more knowledgeable way and with a story like Yvonne's to guide them. Have you heard of Yvonne Furneaux? Which movies caught your interest the most? Let us know in the comments below and check out the next video in this series.